Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, one and all. Those who are listening, it's John Mark W. Hitting you with the word again. We are going to get into Genesis 36 right now. Okay, that is going to be the descendants of Esau. And you guys know how it goes if you listen to my other videos. There have been many lore, many stories, many forms of entertainment. Many other documents and writings and chronicles of all types of thing, whether it is historically true or historical fiction or just straight up fiction, they have all gotten some form of inspiration from the Holy Word of God, the Bible, that which he's allowed to exist for the test of time, and it still exists now, it's still the number one's bestseller. This book actually has the power, unlike those other forms of media, have the power to change your life for the better, not for the worse. It can help you, it can help your family, it can help somebody else. The Bible does nothing but helps and lets you know all that you can do and what power we have as human beings that we can be one with our Creator. It is then and only then are you able to go through some really hard stuff, stuff that most people probably would not survive, right? Most things that people probably wouldn't survive, you can go through that and come out smelling like a rose, come out being clean and pure, looking like you didn't even go through nothing, but you went through a lot of something. But hey, only you and God sometimes will know, maybe you, God, and one other, different people will see different things that God will allow them to see. Some won't see it. Sadly, some ain't supposed to see it. Uh, they're blinded by a lot of things and they won't see it. But for those who can see it, God has given them the ability to see the grace, the great works of God in many different ways. I'm happy to be a part of a fellowship that does believe in launching people out, launching couples out. And having um, you know them go out and pastor in a certain area, uh, most of it is um, church planting involved. And I'm very very happy to get the news when I see of how that's moving and how that's working. Uh, you know I make sure that um, it's just very good to hear that that there are still people that are listening to the Lord and following His voice and being obedient to what He has them do. And that is awesome to be a part of that to be able to support that with the money that the Lord allows me to make and on and on the side for me I know that the Lord has prompted me to start making these videos of the Bible he's prompted me at, uh, during this COVID-19 time where I have a lot of time and I am able to do it because I got laid off on my job so hey I might as well spend some time doing something for the Lord to help someone else who needs it because we don't know what anyone's going through, but God sees you exactly where you're at, and He wants to help you. And that is the whole reason for me doing these videos. It's not to uh, lift up John Mark W. If you do not, if you forget about John Mark W., you have lost nothing. If you forget and don't even acknowledge the Lord God, Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and shed blood for you, you have lost everything. Let every devil and every man be a liar. Let God's word be true. And saying this going forward, we are going to get in this chapter today. This is Genesis 36, New Living Translation, Descendants of Esau. So this is going to be pretty much one that doesn't need too much elaboration on because it's just talking about Esau and his descendants around uh, the Seir area. Uh, Mount Seir is uh, the mountain that um, Esau probably resided on and then... Everybody else is kind of in the lower portions or around that mountainous desert type of area. And, and, and like I said, if you, if you, um, I remember I mentioned before, uh, I've mentioned that, you know, there's characters like Esau in the media, just to name a few, the characters that I can think of in popular games, because, you know, Esau has red hair. And he was an outdoorsman. He was an outdoors type of person. He liked to hunt. He had red hair. He was a manly man. He wasn't like Jacob, which was a little bit smoother of a man. And, you know, Jacob was a kind of a mama's boy in a way. Esau was his brother, and Esau was a manly man, right? And he had red hair. And, uh, you know, Edom 
was a nickname of his because he was just red all over and hairy, right? So you have characters like that that is shown in the media, and they are usually the bad guys. I know there's occasionally there's red-haired good guys. I remember Samurai Jack as a partner in the Samurai Jack cartoon. He wears a kilt, and he uses a broadsword, whereas Samurai Jack uses the katana, of course. Um... In popular media, I can think of red-haired individuals. Akuma being one from Street Fighter. Uh, then you have uh, Ganondorf from Zelda. And I would say more Ganondorf because Ganondorf actually resides in a desert area. Right? Uh, the Gerudo Valley. And um, and if you, play, if you have played Zelda 64, you probably heard, remember the music, remember the theme, remember all the stuff you would have to do in there. I know I have... And, and uh, so these are some characters that I can think off the top of my head that, that have red hair, that um, was, you know, and that are kind of seen as uh, antagonistic and not really your friend there. <laughs> but um, I know, I'm sure there's more, but those are the first two that come off the top of my head. And so we, we read in a couple chapters back about how Jacob took Esau's uh, birthright for a bowl of lentils. He stole the blessing that the father Isaac was going to pass down to Esau, and Jacob took it, and his mother made him do that, which was kind of jacked up, but hey, what the devil means for evil, God can turn that thing around and mean it for good. Jacob's name meant supplanter, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of, you know, uh, scheming, the schemer, that type of dude. Uh, he was, had a way with words, and so uh, he had a way of doing things that he would make in sure that he would have victory. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so uh, you can check out my other videos about all of Jacob's exploits and stuff. He wrestles with God. God's changed him, his name to Israel. So his name is no longer that. And, you know, he is a descendant of, you know, his dad. His grandfather was Abraham. His dad was Isaac. And then you have Jacob. These are the three patriarchs that... Uh, when he when he's going to talk to Moses later on in Exodus, and we'll get to that later. But when God identifies Himself to Moses, and this is the first time He's identified Himself to um, to men in a super long time, because we understand at that time they're going to be slaves in Egypt. He identifies Himself as the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then of course. He talks to Moses many times after that on Mount Sinai where he gives him uh, the Ten Commandments and basically everything that happened before that point in Genesis. And then, of course, he listens to God. He gets the laws and things in Exodus. And we'll discuss all that later. But just so we don't get off point, there's some cool things coming. But right now, we're talking about Esau and his descendants. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's do it. This is the account of the descendants of Esau, also known as Edom. Esau married two young women from Canaan, Ada and the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and Oholibama, <laughs> these Bible names, I tell you, Oholibama, the daughter of Anna, and the granddaughter of Zibion, the Hivite. He also married his cousin, uh, Basemith, who was the daughter of Ishmael and the sister of Neboeth. Ada gave birth to a son named Ilipaz for Esau. Basemath gave birth to a son named Ru, and Aholibalam, uh, Aholibama <laughs> gave birth to sons named Jeush, Jelam, and Korah. All these sons were born to Esau in the land of Canaan. Esau took his wives, his children, and his entire household, along with his livestock and cattle, all the wealth he had acquired in the land of Canaan, and moved away from his brother Jacob. There was not enough land to support them both because of all the livestock and the possessions they had acquired. So Esau, also known as Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir. This is the account of Esau's descendants and the Edomites who lived in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons. Elipaz, the son of Esau's wife, Ada, and Reuel, the son of Esau's wife, Basemith. The descendants of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Tema, the concubine of Esau's son Eliphaz, gave birth to the son named Amalek. 
These are the descendants of Esau's wife, Ada. The descendants of Ruel were Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These are the descendants of Esau's wife, Basemith. Esau also had sons through Oholibama, the daughter of Anna, and the granddaughter of Zibion. Their names were Jeosh, Jalam, and Korah. These are the descendants of Esau who became the leaders of the various clans. The descendants of Esau's oldest son, Eliphaz, became the leader of the clan of Timon, Omar, Zepho, and Canaan, uh, Kinez, Korah, Getam, and Amalek. Em these are the clan leaders in the land of Edom who descended from Eliphaz. All these were descendants of Esau's wife, Ada. The descendants of Esau's son, Reuel, became the leaders of the clans of Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These are the clan leaders in the land of Edom who descended from Reuel. All these were the descendants of Esau's wife, Basemith. The descendants of Esau and his wife, Oholibama, became the leaders of the clans of Jehush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the clan leaders who descended from Esau's wife, Oholibama, the daughter of Anna. These are the clans descended from Esau, also known as Edom, identified by their clan leaders, the original people of Edom. These are the names of the tribes of uh, tribes that descended from Seir, the Horite. They lived in the land of Edom, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. These were the Horite clan leaders, the descendants of Seir, who lived in the land of Edom. The descendants of Lo, Lotan were Hori, Haman, Lo, Lotan, sister, was named Tima. The descendants of Shobal were Avalon, Manahath, Ebel, Shepho, and Onam. The descendants of Zibion were Aya and Anna. This is the Anna who discovered the hot springs in the wilderness while he was grazing his father's donkeys. The descendants of Anna were the son Dishan and his daughter Oholibama. The descendants of Dishan were Himden. Eshban, Ithran, and Keren. The descendants of Ezer were Bilan, Zevan, and Achan. The descendants of Dishan were Uz and Aran. So these were the leaders of the Horite clans, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. The Horite clans are named after their clan leaders who lived in the land of Seir, rulers of Edom. These are the kings who ruled the land of Edom before any king ruled over the Israelites. Bela, son of Beor, who ruled in Edom from his city of Denaba. When Bela died, Jobab, the son of Zerah from um, Bozrah, became king in his palace. When Jobab died, Husham from the land of the Ten T T Temanites became king in his place. When Hushem died, Hedan, son of Bedad, became king in the place and ruled from the city of Avith. He was the one who defeated the Midianites in the land of Moab. When Hedad died, Samla, from the city of Mesir, Mis, Misrika, became the king of his place. Then Samla died. Shal, from the city of Rehoboth, on the river, became king in his place. Place. When Shal died, Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, became king in his place. When Baal Hanan, son of Abkor, uh, Akbor, died, Adad became king in his place and ruled from the city of Pa. His wife was Mahatha, Mahetabel, the daughter of Matrid and the granddaughter of Mizaheb. Okay. These are the names of the leaders of the clans descended from Esau who lived in the places named for them. Timnah, Alva, Jeth, Jeth, Jetheth, Oholibama, Elah, Pinyon, Kinaz, Taman, Mibzar, Magdiel, and Irem. These are the leaders of the clans of Edom listed according to their settlements in the land they occupied. They all descended from Esau, the ancestor of of the Edomites. All right. So this is Esau's time to shine. And hey, 
we God understands what Jacob did, and Jacob was kind of just doing what his mother wanted him to do. He understands the bigger picture, and there was still a blessing there for Esau. He still became a great leader of his nation, and it all has to do with keeping God's covenant he made with Isaac and Abraham. So even though Jacob did that bull crap, God still made him an awesome nation. So it's just talking about the leaders and things like that. And I kind of don't want to repeat all those names. I'm probably butchering some of them. So I'm not going to repeat all that, but there is some things that I wanted to note here. So let's just, just take a look at this real quick here. Okay, there was something. Yeah, so um, I'm going to have maps and the location of Seir. It's going to be labeled on the maps that I'm going to uh, have and show you guys as some of the pictures for this video. It's going to be around the same uh, area that uh, all this other stuff take pl took place. Got to understand, these people are traveling on foot by donkey and things like that. They have to, you know, you know... Uh, they have a big, a big company of people. So, you know, it was kind of in the same area. You know, they, they, they didn't have no cars. They didn't have no planes. They didn't have nothing like that. So, you know, it's not, um, what's it called? So it's not like they could really be in so many other places. You know what I'm saying? So the maps that I'm going to show you, look the same, similar to the other maps, because, well, this is the area that this was all taking place. I remember they had to walk, use camels, so it's a different time period, but it is labeled. It's going to have Seir kind of on the right-hand side. You guys will see that. The desert, mountain, mountainous region of Seir, okay? Then uh, you're going to have um, all the other stuff there. I'm going to have a map that's going to show like a detailed view. I'm going to have different maps. One is colorful. One looks more realistic, like it was shot from a satellite. Um, one is kind of like artwork, like it was drawn. So yeah, you guys will get different maps here. And then of course the good old other pictures of the scrolls, the Bibles and the words and stuff like that. Um, I was trying to look at something in here, if I can find it. There was something of importance that I wanted to say. So yeah, so it mentions here in the word that before Israel had their king, right? The nation of Esau and his descendants, which they called the Edomites, they had they were already having monarchies and stuff like that. Now, we already know before this, the Abraham was known as a prince among the people he was around. Okay, so this is Jacob's grandfather, Isaac's father of the covenant of God. Um, so he was seen as a king, a prince. He was also seen as a... God recognized him as a man of God, a prophet. So God called him a prophet. He was seen to others as a prince. So he was kind of like, he was a patriarch of his family. He was wearing different hats and he probably wasn't even paying attention or didn't even know, you know, I don't think he really considered that. He was just trying to obey God, do what was right. And, you know, not trying to cause trouble in this land he wasn't from, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and so he met another king, the King Abimelech, right? With Phicol, his commander. And um, we, all, we all know later that that's the Philistines, basically. I didn't even realize that until I read it. And they're calling Abimelech and all his, you know, king, his land, the land of the Philistines now. And I'm like, oh, shoot. So they have basically, I don't know if Abimelech changed his name to the Philistines or if they were always the Philistines or if he just wanted to say that one day and he they just wanted to kind of I don't know I'm not really sure how that worked or maybe one of his descendants changed the name from whatever they were to the Philistines but it officially called them the Philistines a few chapters after 
they were dealing with Isaac, right? They were already doing pranks and doing stupid stuff to Abraham's wells. Abraham pointed that out to him when he tried to, you know, make a deal and make a, you know, treaty with them. And then they turn into the Philistines. And that is so crazy because I think I mentioned this earlier on. The Philistines become one of the Israelites' first real big enemies in the Bible. I mean, they, 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 they dry up their wells. They clog it up, put rocks in there, say the well is for them. Um, they'll go ahead. They steal the crops every once in a while. I mean, they just mess with the Israelites for like no apparent reason. But we all know God is in charge of this, right? So it's like that that uh, covenant that they made with, with Abraham is like totally blown out of the water by them. And I think what the Lord goes to show us there is that an earthly king, a human king, his covenants really, they mean a little bit, but in comparison to God's covenant, they don't mean very much. So... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And it could change on a whim. And it can be forgotten. And people may not care. But God keeps his word. He is not a man that he should lie. That just brings so much clarity to that. Anyways, that was a little bit of extra stuff I wanted to get into. I really don't want to reiterate these names because it's basically just talking about the descendants. So I don't feel that we need to go analyze that any further. And so we'll just be done with that. Thank you so much for listening. We're now going to move over into the prayer phase. This is probably one of my shortest videos because it just has to deal with the Edomites and uh, their history and stuff like that. So we're just going to go ahead and get into the prayer phase. You might say, John Mark, uh, what you talked about was awesome and I, I you know, need to get my heart right with God. I realize there's something missing inside of me. Uh, there's a gap, there's a void. I've been trying to fill it with all sorts of things. Entertainment, money, job, work. During this time of COVID-19, it really has showed me my actual state spiritually and I do not want to be in this state. Um, I am ill, I am sick, I need help and I have never once thought to turn to the Lord for this help. Whatever your your issue is, the Lord can help you right now. Now, I believe it, and if you believe it too, we agree on faith, that gives God the power to move and do some awesome things in your life and in the life of others. So you, if that's you, you bow your head and close your eyes in respect to God. You say, Heavenly Father, and just repeat after me now, and you got to mean this from your heart now. You have to be sincere to the Lord. You're not talking to me. You're talking to God. You're making this covenant with God. God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are making your own covenant with God right now, okay? So just repeat after me and mean it with your heart. If you do mean it, good stuff is ahead. Just say, Heavenly Father, O oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, I thank you for your blood sacrifice. Wash my sins away. Make me clean, whole, and pure. I accept your blood sacrifice for my sins. Change me. Make me whole, clean, pure in many ways. And I'll serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, by your precious blood, amen. There are those backsliders that need to get your heart right. You guys know what to do. This ain't your first rodeo. Maybe somebody hurt you. Maybe you mad at somebody. Maybe you felt somebody, you know, maybe there was just a slight misunderstanding and you kind of took it out of proportion. Maybe somebody did lie on you, made some rumors about you, trying to make life hard. Who knows? Who knows? God knows. He knows for sure. You got to get it right with that person. You got to go back and you got to get it right. I'm not going to command and tell you that you need to go to the same church or anything like that. But I will tell you this. If you're rooted in a place, it's best to stay there where you are rooted. But if you feel... And you cannot live in peace with folks, even after you forgive them. And you got to make sure your heart is very clean. And you got to make sure you forgive them for real. Then, hey, you know, just go ahead to another church. But, you know, if you find yourself causing the same issues in that other church, then it's kind of like the issue is with you, right? And that's not something you want to be in another church and then find out. You know what I'm saying? Because it's too late after that point. 
It's all about a heart issue. You guys get that right right now. There's some Christians who are praying in the back for these people that I'm talking to. There's some Christians that you got to get some things right in your heart. That's fine. There's some Christians that maybe this, uh, hearing this word and hearing these things about descendants and this pedigree of leaders has gotten you thinking maybe you want to leave a legacy behind or the Lord is dealing with you with, with all manner of things. I don't know, but God does. You can get right with him right now. Thank you, Lord God, Heavenly Father, for this time. And now we're going to move over to the healing miracle phase. If you guys need miracles, if you need healings, if you can believe with me, there are awesome, wondrous things that are going to happen right now. And I need your help here. This is all our collective faith together. There's some of you guys that you're going to have to get rid of that alcohol. You're going to have to get rid of that beetle nut. You're going to have to get rid of that pugwa. You're going to have to get rid of anything that is, you know, a vice, anything that you can like, anything that can be uh, become an addiction, anything that you can put in the place of God, basically. You guys are going to have to get rid of that. And then you'll receive your healing, whatever your healing is. There are those that you may have to change your lifestyle completely to receive your healing. There are those that you may have to, you know, confess things. Confess sins to the Lord. It doesn't say confess sins to your brother. It doesn't say to confess sins to a man. It says to confess sins to your Father which is in heaven. Now, one to another, meaning your brother and people on your same level, you can confess your faults. Believe me, we're human beings. We will have faults. <laughs> if you don't have faults, oh boy, nobody's told you about them yet, I guess. We will all have faults. and That's different. But confess your sins, you just keep that between you and God because... Another person can't handle the things that, you know, are bothering you or the things that you struggle with or whatever that is. So never mention that, okay? If you want to share your testimony, if you have one, that's one thing. But, you know, you keep that, keep your, whatever you're going through spiritually, your spiritual battles, keep that between you and God. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I mean, if you do tell somebody, at least tell somebody who can actually help you. And in this situation, Jesus died for your sins, so he's the one that can actually help you. Not really anybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's why that, that is there. There's a logical and a practical and spiritual reason why Jesus says that in the New Testament and why it needs to be emphasized. Do not talk to another man about your sins. Do not talk to another, you know, person. Talk to God. There are those that you may have to go to a doctor and have them diagnose you to see if you are healed or not from whatever you're praying for. There are those who may be fine and fit as a fiddle, but you're praying and standing in for somebody who needs prayer, who is far away from you or may be close in proximity to you, and you know that they probably would not watch or hear something of this nature, and you know that God can help them and you want to stand in for them. Okay? And you that you're perfectly fine to do that. Um, all of our situations are different, and God heals how He wants to heal. He can heal instantly. He can heal over a course of time. He can heal you once you do something and that thing that you know you need to do to make things right in your life. Uh, he can heal you as you go to sleep, as you wake the next morning. He can heal you. As you're just going about your day, doing your normal routine. God can heal you at any time. But me, I, or any other person is not responsible for that. Unless you know you need to do something on your part. And you do, you do become responsible for that part. But God heals how he wants to heal, when he wants to heal. Um, I am not in control of that. But So knowing all these things, we can move forward. I need you guys to collectively pray with me right now. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord God, you see these needs, all of these needs before you, and nothing is too hard for you. There is nothing that you cannot do. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord God, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for your ultimate sacrifice on the cross. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Lord God. We give you the praise and the adoration and we thank you that it's done. That pain has to leave. That vice has to leave. That um, cancer must go. That AIDS must go away. That pain, that chronic illness 
must leave in the presence of Jesus Christ. It cannot stay when Jesus Christ is in there. It cannot. It has to leave. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys very much for listening to that. You guys, if God has helped you truly, sincerely, please leave me a like, subscribe, comment in the uh, below about what God has done with you. Let somebody know who is near you. Um, and I pray that you be well and that heaven smiles upon you. And until the next video, I will see you guys next time. Be safe, be saved, do the right thing. Thank you.